Yeah, hi everyone. So the next lab uh, is going to be on digital potential meters. And I thought that would be uh, um, helpful if I made a very short video on uh, what we are going to do today, or at least uh, on how to use the, the basic item that you're going to use in your lab exercise, which is the digital potential meter. So you can already see in the shared window that I've already connected video camera here so it's my fingers hello and uh, so here is your digital potential meter right so it, it doesn't look in any way to the uh, digital potential meter the, the potential meters that you would have uh, used at some point it's not your knob potential meters or your slider potential meters it's not anything like this so everything is inside a small chip so uh, we'll be soon uh, sharing a data sheet uh, which will have some more information about it and again the uh, focus here is not to understand how the additional potential meter is actually made, but to figure out how to use it in applications. And the idea of using a digital potential meter is this. Now you uh, know how to use the oscilloscope, for instance, for recording the data. You can now use uh, the Raspberry Pi to automate things, to record the data, to do analysis. And basically, you can communicate with different things. Now imagine that you have a potential meter that you can move at your will, the viper position at your will, and you can set the viper position of the potential meter by writing a program. You move it to a pre-specified location, do the measurements that you want to measure, and then record the data either by using an oscilloscope or an ADC, depending on the kind of application. So when you think of applications like those, the digital potential meter actually becomes very, very helpful. And that is why I decided to frame a whole set of uh, experiments just centering around the digital potential meter. Because imagine this, so you are able to wipe at command over a range of resistance values, which means that you'll be able to obtain a range of data points automatically just by sweeping it. Okay. So that's actually one of the tasks uh, in the lab exercise also. You have to write a program which will allow you to sweep through all possible values of the potential meter. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. So let's let's just have a look. What are the different building blocks here, right? So uh, coming to the digital potential meter now. So the digital potential meter has got uh, five plus three leads. Now you've got five leads on the top, which includes the the voltage source and the ground, and then you've got three other pins, which is called uh, chip select, increment, and up or down. So the chip select allows you to select the device. So it's like when you're doing with the SPI connection or the I2C connection where you send a flag or you say that, okay, or you have an address and you select the address to activate the particular device. In a similar fashion, the chip select allows you to activate or to select the particular, the potential meter so that you can start working with it. So that's the function of chip select. Up or down, UD, essentially means that you can move the wiper. You're telling the potential meter that you want to move the wiper either up or down from its current position. And that's the function of UD. And increment, INC, is what tells you by how many steps you want to move it either up or down. So if you look at the algorithm, again, this is available both in the program that has been supplied to you and also uh, in the data sheets, right? So the algorithm is you first do a chip select. You say that, okay, fine, I want to select a potential meter. Then you tell the potential meter whether you want to move up or down. And then you tell it by how many steps you want to move it up or down. So that's basically the first five pins, the top five pins of your, um, your potential meter. And you can see that those top five pins are actually connected here. Right? These are the top five pins which are going to the respective uh, pins on the Raspberry Pi. And then the bottom pins are the three pins, which is VH, VL, and VW. So the names are fairly self-explanatory. VH is the, is the connection you make with the high voltage. VL is either you connect it to a lower voltage or you ground it. And then the VW is uh, the Viper voltage. So you can think of using now, if you forget that there are these additional five pins, which is allowing you to control the digital potential meter, the remaining three pins are allowing you to use the digital potential meter as a normal potential divider. In what sense? So say you connect the VH pin to a voltage high, say 3.3 volts. 
you connect the VL pin to the ground and then you have got the, the voltage divider setup because then from VW, that's the wiper pin. So you can measure a voltage across VW and ground, right? And so if you can move, because you can move the wiper location, it means that you're also able to change the voltage drop, which means that essentially you have realized uh, a voltage divider circuit where you are able to move the wiper location. And that is what I'll actually be showing you right now. That is how I've currently set it up. So the three pins that you see here lower, they are connected to three independent board pins. This, uh, the VH is connected to 3.3 volts. So that's going here. So it's connected to the Raspberry Pi. So it's going to 3.3 volts. Uh, the VL is connected to the ground, which is again connected to the Raspberry Pi ground. And then here I have the VW, which is connected to my oscilloscope. So this is your oscilloscope uh, probe. And I've got a ground connection. And in the oscilloscope, you can see that uh, you have a, you have a signal currently and it's sweeping. Actually, it's sweeping. It may not be evident on the video screen, but it's actually continuously sweeping at this point. There's no trigger. So it's just an auto trigger and it's just continuously sweeping. So now let me show you the library that you will need to use the uh, potentiometer. So let me go to my uh, VNC session, which I have on. My VNC session is here. Right. So you should be able to see it. One second. Second, I don't know why I can't share the screen. Let me share the whole window. Yep. So I'm now currently sharing the whole window, whole screen with you. And now I can open the VNC session. Right. So, so this is the file uh, which I have actually shared with you or which I'll be sharing with you on Moodle and in this file you can already see that I've given some information. This file is also available on GitHub as a separate repository. I made it available publicly because this is something I have written myself. So here you can also see the code flowchart and if you read the uh, lab manual uh, you'll see how each step is actually happening and why I'm choosing some steps for uh, some specific time intervals for activating a few things. So here you can already see how you need to use the uh, library to connect to the potential meter and move it up or down. Now in this library, you have got several functions. So this includes the initiate, right? The activate, the wiper set, the wiper move. And there's also the reset, we can get to this later. So that's not very important. And then you have got the def uh, disconnect. So the basic idea is you first, as you can see also in the code, uh, in the, uh, the flowchart, you first initiate your digital potential meter, then you activate it, right? Then after you have done that, you can set the wiper, then you tell the potential meter to move by using the wiper move command. And after you have done the movement and whatever other things that you want to do, you finally disconnect the potential meter. And that's basically the whole code, that's it. So now if I want to show you how the potential meter actually works, how you actually write a program. So this is also shared with you or this will be shared with you on Moodle. So this one is uh, you have, uh, I'm importing the library function. So you've got library function, uh, the, the header file or the, the header or the module as you want to call it. So I import that as what? I specify the GPIO pin. So ultimately what I'm doing is this is all digitally controlled and that's why I'm able to use the Raspberry Pi. And I am specifying the GPIO pins which are connected to the CS, INC and the UD. CS, INC and UD pins on the digital potential meter. And basically by sending signals to the CS, INC and UD pins in a systematic manner, I'm able to move the viper position. Right? You don't really have to worry about how all of that is happening. All of that is actually included in this, uh, in all the header files and in all these uh, functions which are defined within that header file. So you don't have to worry about why it's happening in that way. You just have to remember that 
you have to initiate your potential meter, you have to activate it, you have to tell it whether you want to move it up or down, and then you tell it how many steps you want to move, and finally you discard it. So this is the sequence of uh, operations that you need to do to work with your digital potential meter. And this is what exactly I've done here. So first of all, I also specify what are my CS, INC, and UD pins. So I've told that. Uh, this delay is not uh, really necessary. Uh, I've just included it to you maybe for some other reason. I initiate my potential meter and I use CSI and CUD, then I activate it. So I've also done that. And now I'm telling it I want it to move it upwards, right? So when I say that, it moves it. So I set the flag as one. And then I say that I want to move it by 10 steps. So I say that, okay, fine, please move it by 10 steps. And then I go pot dot wiper set. And this is basically sending the digital potential meter the information that I want the wiper to move up. So I send the flag argument here. And then I say that, okay, now I want the wiper to move. And this is the wiper move argument, and this includes the number of steps. And once that I've done that, I finally say pot dot disconnect. Right? So now let's have a look on the uh, oscilloscope, how this would actually look like. Now bear with me that uh, this digital potential meter that I'm currently using, I've been using it for a long time. It has seen some really tough days, so it may not function the way that is exactly supposed to, but the potential meters that you'll be using in your labs are brand new. They have been literally untouched. Maybe they have been they'll be used by the TAs once or twice, but not more. So uh, you will get a much better result than what you see here. So I'll try to replicate the exact experimental conditions that you will observe, but don't worry, it will not affect the lab activities that I've designed for you because the lab activities won't be affected too much by this, okay? So let's go forward and let's see how uh, this program is currently going to run. So let me go back to my, so this is the program I'll run. So what I'll do is I'll now stop sharing my screen and I'll just sh show you the camera screen. So you should be able to see my camera screen. Okay. And now I want you to pay attention to what's happening on the oscilloscope, right? So now the way that I've written the program is, if you are setting the, uh, the digital potential meter to step by 10 steps, it will move the potential meter by 10 steps, and then it will hold that value when you disconnect, right? So you have the option of not storing the value at all. So what I've, I've written the program in such a way that it actually stores the value. Now, what you might see is it might drop to a lower level. And that's because, again, as I mentioned, I've really, really, really spent a lot of time with this digital potential meter. And I might have kind of burnt a few things here and there. And that's why it might just drop down. But ideally, if you run this code, this exact code that I've written, it will actually go up that 10 steps and hold that value. Well, if not permanently, at least for a very, very, very long time for all purposes of the experiment. Right? So let's see what happens. So now I've told uh, in my program that I want to step this potential meter by 10 steps. So let me run the program for you now. And please pay attention to what, ha what happens on the oscilloscope. Uh, just one second with this message over Yeah. So now I'm pressing run on my program. Okay, so you saw a blip and that is not what I wanted you to see. Hopefully, yeah. So now it has gone up 10 steps. I'll run the program again. It has gone up another 10 steps. So what you're basically seeing is the voltage divider actually moving and slowly increasing the resistance value. So initially it was at zero. Now every time, so you see that drop there, that's not supposed to happen. So every time I'm pressing run, it is rising up 10 steps. The resistance is increasing and that's why you're seeing a higher potential value. So that's how ideally the potential meter is supposed to work. And thankfully, it is actually working the way it is supposed to. So now you can imagine how you can actually sweep through a set of values by writing an appropriate program and also getting the appropriate output of the oscilloscope. And that's basically what I would like you to do in the lab session. And you already have the instructions. So hopefully this video is now giving you a better picture of what you're expected to do. So this is not what I expect. So it, yeah, the level actually fell down. That is what 
I don't expect to happen. It will stay at the high level for a long time. Right? In your case, it should be fine. So yeah, have a look at the lab manual and uh, hopefully now it should be clearer to you what you need to do. And if you have any questions, the QAs and instructors are going to help you. Okay. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, have fun.